May the Almighty grant us ease. This matter is absolutely important. It is so important because on the globe, at the moment, we are in desperate need of the voice of reason. We are in desperate need of a balanced voice that does not take away from us our religion, nor does it take away from anyone else their right to believe in whatever they feel is correct. But rather, it gives us that mutual respect which results in the peaceful coexistence that we are talking about today. My brothers and sisters, many people think tolerance means I'm going to give up my faith, I'll tolerate, so I don't have to do what Allah has said, I don't have to dress in a specific way, I don't have to pray in a specific way, I don't have to do X, Y, and Z that the Almighty has instructed. That is a misconception completely. Tolerance has nothing to do with giving up your opinion. It has more to do with respecting the same right that others have of not giving up their opinions. Amazing. Amazing. In the same way I feel my opinion is sacred, I feel intelligent, I feel, wow, I'm clever. Everyone else feels the same. As much as I am passionate about Islam, there are people who are passionate about Christianity. There are people who are passionate about Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever other ism, even atheism. I can believe that I am correct and I do. I do believe that I am absolutely correct, but guess what? Don't they have a right to believe as human beings in whatever they consider to be the most correct? Subhanallah. When I discussed this some time back with a group of youngsters who were quite religious, they told me, no, they don't have the right. I said, what are you talking about? They don't have the right. You mean that the Almighty only asked you to survive? That's it. And you're the only one who is entitled to be living and everyone else should be dead. Is that what it is? That is absolute, absolutely unacceptable. Everyone has the right to live. Everyone has the right to believe whatever they feel is correct. That's why I am here. Because someone has given me the right to believe that whatever I feel firmly is correct is correct. Subhanallah. If that was not the case, I wouldn't even be here today. It's a very, very important point. I am passionate about Islam. I would desperately like to see people understand the goodness of Islam, see the light within Islam, perhaps come towards the fold of Islam. Maybe if Allah guides them, even enter the fold of Islam. But I need to know that that is a struggle that will continue and it, it needs to be done in a very respectful way. There will be people who agree with me. There will be people who disagree with me. There will be people who couldn't be bothered at all. And there will be people who will Fight me as a result. How do I react? How do I retaliate? I need to make sure that I can peacefully coexist with all these differences of opinion. I remember when I became part of an interfaith committee at one stage, people told me that you are losing your faith. And I said, absolutely not. You don't even know what we are discussing. We want to understand each other. We want to be able to discuss what we believe so that we can respect each other and, and so that we can actually perhaps learn from each other. And guess what? Many people who did not know much about Islam learned that it is actually a religion that has heavenly teachings, that has superb teachings filled with not only excellence in the worship of the Almighty, but even in our interaction with humankind and the other creatures of the Almighty. They did not have that opportunity before. So when we participate in interfaith committees and dialogues and conferences, never is it to give up your faith, as some people might presume, but rather it is to be able to coexist peacefully and exchange notes to understand each other without giving up a single droplet of what I believe. Subhanallah. It's amazing.
It doesn't mean that, you know, because I interacted with people of other faiths that I have suddenly given up my own faith. No, rather I have shown them how beautiful the faith is and they would show me as well perhaps what they may have that I may not have known before. There are so many teachings of these heavenly faiths that are so common yet we don't know. It is ignorance, my brothers and sisters, that results in hate that would actually then result in fighting and possibly even killing may the Almighty protect us from ignorance so let's educate ourselves let's become people who are willing to peacefully coexist that is the entire meaning of tolerance I draw your attention to something else every one of us at some stage and I've said this so many times whether it was within ourselves for those who have reverted to Islam whether it was our parents or grandparents or great grandparents or somewhere up that ladder, they were not Muslims. They were not Muslims. Someone somewhere somehow happened to be speaking to them or dealing with them or associating with them or interacting with them in such a beautiful way that they decided they want to be Muslim. That's why we're Muslim, subhanAllah. Had they been taught not to interact, not to associate, not to deal with, to fight, to be at war with, had they been taught that you're the only people who have the right to exist on earth, if that was the case, our forefathers would have been wiped out from the earth. So it's common logic. We need to appreciate that someone somewhere, somehow, has actually had that concern to be able to interact in such a positive way that we are where we are today. Take a look at the Jawa, take a look at Indonesia and that part of the world where it is said that, and they are the most populous Muslim nations on the globe. It is said that Islam has spread there, not even through the, the active propagation of Islam, but rather through businessmen and traders and people who dealt with them when they were honest, when they dealt with them in such a beautiful way. There was a little flicker of a candle within the heart that became brighter and brighter such that they wanted to know more about what is making you such good people and then they entered the fold of Islam imagine so that's part of the beauty of this tolerant religion of Islam I'd like to think that re religion has partly been hijacked by those who don't understand scriptures those who have misinterpreted it intentionally to suit their own agendas of creating disaster on the globe in the name of the most merciful. I always say, those who kill in the name of religion have perhaps never considered the fact that the Almighty calls himself the most merciful, the most beneficent. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Every time we start, we say, in the name of Allah, the most forgiving, the most merciful, or the most merciful, the most merciful. One in a specialized way and one in a very, very broad way. The owner of mercy, the one who calls himself the, the most merciful, do you really think that he would ask you to wipe people out, out of that mercy? Subhanallah, subhanallah. You are killing in the name of the, the giver of the life. If he wanted, he could have taken that life away himself. And secondly, you are killing in the name of the most merciful. Where is the mercy? Where is the understanding of the beautiful faith? Subhanallah. So we go back to the issue of tolerance. To willingly ex coexist with those whom you differ with. Subhanallah. You ready? You ready? Let's go back to the first verse that I recited here. And I said, I'm going to come back to it. Remember? Oh, people, we have created you from a single male and female. And thereafter, we have made you spread as different peoples and tribes. Why? Why is there black and white and yellow and brown? Why are there different races, ethnicities, different sizes, different understandings? Allah says, one word in order that you can recognize each other you are different not so that you can discriminate against each other that's not the reason 
Allah didn't say so that one can consider himself higher or bigger than the other. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in order that you recognize one another. They say, who is this man? He is an Indian. Who is this man? He is this. He is that. He is an African. Or he comes from this place or that place. It does not mean that the Almighty wants you to discriminate. Not at all. Rather, you recognize each other. Each person, each person comes in front of the Almighty on the day of judgment on his own. Remember, if you think a certain nationality is bad, a certain race is bad, a certain ethnicity is bad, you are so wrong because every race and every nationality and every ethnicity has in it good and bad. So you would be totally uneducated if you thought that a nationality in its entirety is bad just because of the acts of a few. We as Muslims are trying to combat this type of ideology where people on the globe who have become Islamophobic think that because of the acts of a small percentage of people who, who are Muslim or who claim connection to the faith because of their actions, we're all suddenly termed as guilty. We're all termed as those who have absolutely no right to exist. Those who are intolerant, terrorists, whatever else. All these words are used against us. And why are these words used against us? Because of a few, a small number who have actually perpetrated heinous crimes in the name of this beautiful faith that we are speaking about. The faith of mercy, the faith of tolerance and goodness. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So the Almighty addresses mankind at large, reminding us of the fact that you come from a common forefather. You're all brothers and sisters. In the same way, I believe I have a right to exist on earth. I promise you, anyone who was born on earth has the equal right. Same right. You were born on earth. They were born on earth. You have the same right. You have a right to your opinion. You have a right to your, what you believe is correct. You can believe what you think. And you know what? Keep on educating yourself. I know one might say, well, as a Muslim, I believe that I'm 100% correct. Yes, I do. I actually do as well. But you know what? Do you realize that people of other faiths and even those who don't have a faith, they too would perhaps believe or they have the right to believe that they are 100% correct. And I have the right to believe that perhaps they are wrong and they have the right to believe that perhaps I am wrong. These are all rights. This is what makes humankind. Why should we think because this person doesn't think like me, I must eradicate them. I must chop them off. I must hate them. I must perhaps not live with them, not talk to them. No. Learn to greet people. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us about greeting, not because of any reason besides its great importance and the benefit of it. I recall myself. In my travels, many times people look at me and perhaps things go through their minds. The moment you break into a smile and you greet them, I swear 99% of the time it changes the attitude completely. Wow, they realize, okay, this is a human being. Okay, Ooh, he smiled. He actually greeted, subhanallah, subhanallah.